and we are good to go. All right, so thank you for joining me today uh, to this bi-weekly workshop. Uh, of course, my name is Brian Johnson. If you are not familiar with me, then now you are. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, I'll, uh, I'll introduce myself in a little bit here. But today we're going to be talking about the five mistakes making your product, products invisible to shoppers on Amazon. And basically, uh, you can have the best product in the world, but if you can't capture shoppers' initial attention, this is going to be a running theme here, you'll lose out to an inferior competitor every single time. And I'll walk through as far as what that means and what it means to you and why you need to do something about it today. Uh, the first thing you need to do, of course, is before you can hook them, get them to click on your product, get them to actually see your product, to catch the eye of that shopper so that they can actually consider clicking through to your product listing. Otherwise, your product listing, as shiny and perfectly uh, balanced and optimized as it may be, it may not be enough if they don't get there in the first place, right? So that's gonna be a secondary topic that I'll talk about in the future. Uh, and that has to do with listing optimization and really focusing your message on your product detail page. But I'm gonna start, of course, with that very limited attention span that shoppers have. Uh, let me do kind of a quick check here. Can everybody see, hopefully what you see right now is you see a slide that I'm sharing, five mistakes making your product invisible to shoppers, and then maybe like my little head off in the corner somewhere. Uh, give me a one if that's true. Give me a zero if you're, if you're not seeing that. Awesome. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. All right. Let me go ahead and jump in here then. Um, what we're going to be talking about, of course, is the goal of today, and that is to stop the scroll, right? So we want to use every tool we have just to get that shopper to stop, take your product out of the thousands of other options and give it a second look. So think about this. A lot of us um, have been trained, a lot of shoppers on Amazon have been trained, uh, whether that is on their mobile phone, mobile phone, where they're thumbing through, they're scrolling through with their thumb, um, or you know the the mouse or the the mouse pad, uh, the touchpad kind of scroll that you have when you just kind of searching through listings. Uh, when all the listings look alike, shoppers very easily skip over. They just kind of glance through. They're just kind of doing a quick scan of all the products that might be available. They'll look at the first couple of them and then they go into scan mode, right? And if you're not in the first couple, uh, if you're not running, you know, ads right at the top, if you're not ranked right at the top, then likely you're going to get caught up in that, that sea of sameness, um, what we'll call later as far as the, 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 the Clone Wars. Um, and that is where your product blends in with all your competing products, and therefore it doesn't draw the attention of the shopper for them to even consider clicking through on your ad. How many of you, give me a five in the chat here. Let's go ahead and use some chat a little bit here. Give me a five in the chat if this is what you feel is happening to your product or shoppers. You're, you're in a niche where it seems like everybody copies everybody and nobody stands out on their own. Give me a five if you feel like you're in that kind of a product niche. Excellent. Excellent. A lot of fives coming in. Perfect. Okay. So cool. All right. So let me go ahead and jump in then and let's go into a little bit more detail. But first, before we get started, of course, I uh, just want to take a quick minute to let you know that this workshop is sponsored by a phenomenal advertising agency team. Uh, of course, it's the one that I've built that includes multi-million dollar brands, top Amazon executives, and trained and accredited experts with a proven track record of high performance ad and listing management, among our other suite of services that we provide for brands on and off of Amazon. If your brand wants to know if now is the time to consider outsourcing to an agency, then this is a chance for you to level up your competitive presence on, and profitability on Amazon. That's one of the things we do very well. Uh, then what I would recommend is reach out to my team at canopymanagement.com slash webinar hyphen offer. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Alex, uh, one of my team members, to post that link into the chat for you. If you want to go ahead and uh, submit that, um, if you want to explore whether or not the relationship and a partnership with Canopy would be the next stage in your product's development, then uh, that would be a great opportunity for you. Um, so now that we've got that out of the way, sponsorship done, let's move in. Who's ready to get started uh, with the workshop today? All right, so um, 
Let me introduce myself really quick. For those of you who are not familiar with me, my name is Brian Johnson or Brian R. Johnson because there's, uh, it's kind of a John Smith name. There's a bunch of Brian Johnsons out there. Uh, and so I am the founder of a number of companies that are related to Amazon advertising. Uh, and so that includes the Amazon PPC troubleshooting Facebook group. We're now, I think we're just on the cusp of about 21,000 members on there. And so that's been going strong for, for a few years now. Uh, I'm also the co-founder of the original ad management software for Amazon 3P sellers called PPC Scope. We are now in the process of releasing version number three, which includes support for additional newer ad types. So that is a fantastic milestone for us. I'm also the, the, some of you may have been students of my sponsored products academy. We're now on the third version of that, uh, you know, basically the, the 2020 version. And of course, that is a very professional, in-depth, very dense uh, course that gets you, uh, takes you from even beginner or intermediate up to uh, intermediate to advanced level in your advertising. Um, and so, uh, and then of course, the, I'm also the co-founder of what I just showed as a sponsorship. And that, of course, is my ad agency, the Done For You ad agency, Canopy Management. I've done uh, coaching, speaking, consulting, doesn't matter because what I want to give you uh, today is the, the keys that you need in order to really set your product apart from the sea of competition so that, um, I'm sorry, I, I was just kind of getting distracted by Victor's thing. Monthly PPC sales means what? Um, and I don't actually know why that question came up. I'm not showing it currently, am I? Uh, nope. Monthly PPC sales is, oh, I see you're, you pay, basically, okay. So I see, gotcha, uh, on the Canopy site. Sorry, I thought you were referring to the, to the thing. Uh, Alex, if you wanna address that question, I appreciate it, thank you. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in and talk about um, essentially marrying the title of competitor. In other words, the mistake number one is your title of your product mirrors what your competitors are, okay? So what we wanna do is we wanna set our product apart in the title. We are not using the title to speak to the search engine that has passed like two years ago, okay? If you are still stuffing your title of your product with keywords, hoping that you're gonna get a higher ranking, you've made a mistake like two years ago. Okay, so time to get current with 2020. You need to be speaking to your target audience. Speak to the shopper, not to the search engine, okay? Now, the similarities in product titles make it so that shoppers aren't drawn to one particular product over another. This happens anytime, let's say you're a, um, you're a leader, you know, a leader in your product niche, then everybody copies you, right? And so they come up to your speed, up to your level. Um, if you brought in a product saying, hey, it's selling really well, and you, and you set up your product listing originally, that it's like, well, I'm going to match what everybody else is doing, because that apparently is a formula that's working. Now, all of a sudden, everybody looks the same. Some product niches are uh, are really bad about this, where you, you look at it and the first 50 listings, they're almost identical. You know, there's variations like, oh, this one has a red widget in the photo and this one has a blue widget. Uh, this one might have, uh, you know, different, you know, a, a different feature or a, a specification that's listed in the title. That's not enough. You need to be, make sure that you are speaking very clearly to the target audience. I'll show you what that means. Now, I put an extra kind of like little, the red symbol on here, right? is you have got to differentiate. I would normally say five seconds once they get to your product listing. If they get into scroll mode, you don't even have that. You basically have to differentiate your, uh, your product listing or your ad um, in a split second, in, in like less than 10th of a second, you've got to catch their eye, okay? And I'm gonna teach you how to do that. So. Right now, you figure is that most shoppers, whether they're on the desktop or a mobile, especially on the mobile, they are just scrolling through and they're just looking at all these listings that all look alike. And you've got to put in place something that's going to catch their eye. Give them to pause for just a split second so that they will consider your product uh, longer, long enough, hopefully, in order to see the benefit and to click on it. But you got to make sure the benefit starts with your title and your image, not just your price or review. Stop competing on price and reviews. The way that I teach this, the way that I coach is I want to have product listings, uh, including the image, the title, the bullets, the, the, the video, 
uh, the first bullet and the video course, all of these should be designed in order to demonstrate the value to a shopper, even if your product is 10, 20, $50 higher than most of the competition, you should be winning that sale. If you're not currently doing that, it's because either everybody that you're targeting is looking for a bargain basement product that's, that's cheap, or you more likely, what I see the most is you're not setting your product uh, out from the competition and really demonstrating to that shopper why, why you're better and doing it within that first five seconds. So your product title has got to, to vary up. Now, how do we do that? So mistake number two, of course, is you don't have a WIFM. Who knows what a WIFM is? Put it into the chat if you know what WIFM means, what this acronym is. Yeah, got it. One. Well, Victor was first on that one. So nice job, Victor. Um, yes. Yep. Good. 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 Now, okay. Everybody's getting it. okay. You got to make sure your chat bots, uh, your your chat window is open. <laughs> um, it's what's in it for me, right? So there's no what's in it for me in the title, and of course, the titles are short, right? Think about who's got a quick guess. You've got a the size of your title, how many characters are visible on, on like say the Amazon mobile app on most phones? How many characters would you guess? Is it 50? Is it 100? 500? Okay, I've got an 80, got a 60. I'll grab a third one here. Who's got a third one? Come on, guys, I need you to jump in here. Otherwise, I'm going to close out. I'm serious about that. Don't waste my time. All right, cool. Thank you, Francisco. You saved the rest of the bunch. All right, so got 80, 60, and 80. All right, so you've got about uh, 88, technically. Uh, and that's going to vary depending on which platform, you know, which, which device and everything, right? So 80, I think is probably closest to what you want to target on. You, you can use the entire title, but within the first 80 characters, you've got to make sure that you are grabbing the attention of the shopper and showing some kind of value to them as far as what's in it for them. What is the value? They don't care about your brand. They don't care about your product. They only care about what is your product going to do for me? Now, I know that some of you that that might hurt because <laughs> as a brand owner, you've got a lot of pride in the brand that you built up and the products that you bring to market and how much energy. I know that because I do it myself. But when it comes to the shopper, they don't know what you know. They don't know the pain that goes into manufacturing. They don't know the cost of your manufacturing. They don't know what you did extra. That's why you have to tell them what is unique about your product. Even if your product is exactly like everybody else's, you need to remind the shopper what it is that they're getting from your product. And you need to do that within the first 80 characters. And usually you have to do it within one or two words because you've got a certain amount of real estate that you're trying to use, like maybe your, your top uh, search term to tell them what is the product that I am selling. But you've also got to build in that first 80 characters of your full title of what's in it for them, right? Uh, again, you, you talk about one to two words in that first half of that title, in that first 80 characters, okay? Now, um, one way to do that is you can study your competitors, right? You can identify the common similarities and the, and the unique differences among the top sellers. Now, there's plenty of product niches where you may sell a product in there and there are uh, there's no discernible difference. Everybody's selling the same thing. You might even be sourcing from the same manufacturer and it's the same mold and everything, the same features and everybody's selling the same thing. That's certainly possible. Usually there's some variation going on, right? But it is possible that you've got plenty of competitors around you that basically sell the same product. And then you come in and, and you're like, okay, I'm selling my product at price A and I've got competitors who are $10 cheaper than me. What's the common philosophy? Well, I need to be price competitive. I need to drive my price down in order to be competitive with those who are undercutting my price. But I'm gonna counter and say, you actually want to keep your price. You just need to differentiate your product, right? So what are the common similarities? What are the unique differences? 
among the top sellers in your product niche, which similarity is a must have feature or benefit to the shopper? Okay. You have to have that in those first 80 characters. Otherwise you kind of lose the audience as far as relevance. Okay. You've got to get them and say, say, okay, this is, this belongs here because it's relevant. Usually the image satisfies that, but the title is, is supporting that as well. So that may simply be, um, you know, if you sell a garden rake, for instance, then you probably want to have garden rake in the first 80 characters, right? If that's what most people are searching for and that's what converts the most, uh, then certainly garden rake, you don't want to take out. Right. Um, but something to consider on this is that you have your own perception as far as what's the must have feature or benefit, but do your, do the reviews on your product and your top competitor's product reflect that must have feature or benefit. If you go through and take the time and actually scan through some of the reviews of some of the top competitors or your own products, you may find that they're actually commonly pointing out something that it was unexpected to you. Maybe they like the fact that it's like, you know what? The handle feels better. And you're in there selling, trying to say, it's like this, this garden rake has a really wide span. So it picks up, so it reduces the work. And they're more concerned about whether or not it's got a rubberized handle because it doesn't blister their hands. So make sure that you understand that you're listening to your audience in whether their audience is in your leaving reviews in your own listing or in your competitor's listing. Take the time. Even if you have to hire a VA or a Fiverr or something like that to go through and collect all the reviews and find the commonalities and the differences in the reviews, do it. It is worth it to understand your audience that much better, right? Does that make sense? All right, so which difference is worth a higher investment from the shopper? If you've got more than one, obviously you wanna make sure that you are putting together, uh, putting into your first 80 characters you want to make sure that not only did you mention what that must have feature is, but is that worth a higher investment from the shopper? In other words, if you sell a garden rake and everybody sells a garden rake and you just put in garden rake and nothing else, then that really doesn't make you stand out at all. Right now, if it, if you're, uh, if the, the handle on your garden rake is a quarter inch longer than most uh, competitors have, then, it's all of a sudden you got an extra long garden rake. Certainly people who are taller understand the need to have extra long tools sometimes or things that where they don't have to reach so far. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things, you know, some, some, some of those things, you know, or like a bigger grip for larger hands or um, more durable plastic so it doesn't break as easy or reinforced, um, you know, reinforced uh, neck on a garden rake so that it is, it's less likely to break. Make sure that you understand as far as what some of the common pain points of your shopper is, of your audience is, and see if you can address that in that first 80 characters of the title in one or two words using things like reinforce. I will say, <laughs> in fact, let me go to the next one here. So what I want you to do on this, as far as answering the what's in it for me, is to focus on why your product is better and unique and worth paying extra for. That feature produces a unique benefit to the shopper. It doesn't matter if every single competitor can say the exact same thing. If you're the one who says it, that's what the shopper is reading. They perceive your product as, high, as having higher value to them because you pointed out something that they may have, you, you take for granted, but a shopper's like, oh, that's actually what I'm looking for. I was looking for some studio lights just earlier today. And I was looking for the extra large, uh, you know, LED studio lights. And not one of them stated the dimensions of their product in their title. Not one. I had to go in and search into their bullet points or even their description just to find out what the size of this light was. I was looking for an extra large light. Not one of them addressed that basic need. They all copied each other and just said, this is the, the metric and this is a, you know, the lumens that it has and everything. Like That's not what I was looking for. Um, is something about the process, the manufacturing process or the materials does that have a higher perceived value? For some of you who remember some of the, the really old who've been around the block, <laughs> for some of you who remember, uh, you know, some of the luxury cars used to come out and their commercials were not about like, 
hey, this is expensive and this is fast and it's got this much horsepower, they would be doing slow moving videos across the stitched leather um, the, of the seats and everything. They're basically, they're painting this experience of luxury and this premium thing. Now you're not using words as I show below, you're not using words like premium, okay? That means nothing to, to people. Um, you've got to be more specific than that. One of the things that I look at on this is uh, one of the big questions that I actually coach uh, my, not only my clients with the agency, but also as far as like coaching students um, is go back to your manufacturer and ask them, what is the most expensive step within the manufacturing process? What is the most time consuming step within the manufacturing process? You'd be surprised. Sometimes, you know, I was talking to, uh, I was talking to a gentleman, uh, uh, just this week here uh, for privacy, I'm not going to mention his name or his product, but uh, he was stating, he brought something up. Um, he goes, oh yeah, it turns out that because they have to do this one process twice, because I requested that they do it, it's more expensive and it's more time consuming. It's like, okay, so you're paying extra and it's taking longer. What, why did you do that? Why are you having them do that? Um, and he says, oh, well, because it, you know, it looks more, you know, it's more premium, it's more luxury. So it's, it's like, why aren't you stating that to your shopper? You took the extra step to invest in your product and you're not, you're not marketing that at all in your title or in your product at all. You know, like that should be in a video that should be it's like like what does it do for the shopper what does it do for them when they actually own your product that is going to like wow this looks so much better than the alternatives it's got a better feel it's got a better feature it gives me you know anything yeah like <laughs> victor says uh uh yeah ricardo montalban wow okay you have been run uh, <laughs> uh that fine corinthian leather yes exactly uh you know the the example that i show here apex stitched give me a one in the chat if you know what apex stitched means i want a lot of participation on this one please don't make me uh <laughs> do like i did last time <laughs> okay yeah give, give zero if you don't yeah or a two if you don't any other number but a one if you do know what apex stitched means good all right Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm glad that you were all honest because it was a word that I made up. Uh, <laughs> Apex stitch, actually, technically, it is actually a term within the fabric uh, industry that basically essentially says like it is the stitching that goes on top of a chair. Think of like, say, an executive office chair. It's made out of leather or pleather or whatever. And you've got like maybe some double stitching along the padded portion of the top. It is designed to strengthen the top so it doesn't flatten out and look bad. But if you look at all the office chairs that are on Amazon or any other store, nobody talks about like, hey, we use this special method. In less in two words, I, I put something that was in the title. Now, it could be the very back of that 80 characters in the title. But I put something in the title that stops the shopper's eye and go, wait, what is Apex Stitched? it begs the question and it begs their curiosity, right? Anything like that, you don't, don't just over, you know, just don't gloss over and say, oh, I'm premium, I'm more organic, I'm special, I'm the best, you know, whatever. You wanna make sure that you're pointing out something, even it's apex stitch may seem a little bit gimmicky, right? But what you're trying to do, my point on this, is you are trying to highlight something that is unique about your product that adds extra that they're going to want to it's going to beg them you know beg curiosity that's going to have them click through to your listing to find out more now on your product listing you've got to be able to answer that question within that first five seconds that i was talking about earlier you've got to have that in your images maybe in your video in your first bullet points maybe all of those locations where you actually answer you deliver on their curiosity and say Apex stitching reinforces the top of the this executive chair so that it doesn't sag over time and it looks premium. It, you know, it looks like an executive office chair for a lot longer. That has value to me. I don't want some, you know, some chair that in two months is going to look, you know, look like crap, right? I want something that's going to stand the test of time and, and, and look good if I'm going to invest money into it. And I'm willing to pay extra for that. Now, the funny thing about that 
is we come in, we say in the first 80 characters, like, okay, you know, this is the executive office chair and it's apex, apex you know, it's with apex stitching or something like that. It catches the eye because people go like, wait, I don't understand what that is. It stands out. Um, there's certain words like that, you know, things like, uh, you know, that, I don't know, for whatever reason, the X kind of grabs people's attention, but you, you want to look for words that are unlike what others are using and maybe are uh, kind of odd uses. I could have said, well, it's, you know, it has double stitching. No, no, I want to say it's apex stitching because apex is an unusual word. It stands out like a sore thumb when somebody's scanning through that. Their subconscious goes, wait, what was that? It gets them to pause for a split second and look again at your product listing while they're scrolling. That's the first thing we have to do. We have to stop that scroll. And things like this do exactly that, right? Uh, extended warranty, everybody's got. I, I like what you're thinking. This is, is going to be a process, right? You're not going to come up with something fast because you're not used to doing it this way, probably, right? What I would recommend, again, start with that question. Reach out to your manufacturer and say, look, you're manufacturing this product for me. What is the one step in the manufacturing process that takes the longest? What is the step in this manufacturing process that is the most expensive? Now they may come in and say, well, you're, you know, you, you've got a supplement and you are using this type of cinnamon, but this is a special kind of cinnamon that we have to like double ground. Well, every single competitor could be doing, have the exact same process. But if you point it out to the shopper and you do it within one or two words in order to ground their, grab their attention. Now you've got to be a little, be a little bit creative and maybe do a little bit of split testing on what those couple of words are that you have in the first 80 characters. But that could be something like, um, you know, like I use Apex Stitch here, it could be like, um, uh, uh, you know, double churn, you know, like, uh, you know, double churned or something like that, you know, something like, 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 wait, what? This is, this is a supplement. What is this double churned? It makes them go like, huh, I need to figure out what this is. So out of curiosity, they're going to click through, right? But it got them to pause, which is the first thing you got to do. You got to get their attention in the first place. Now, they're also looking for things like instant gratification. That's where things like Prime Badge and that kind of stuff usually stick out. So if you are Prime eligible, things like instant gratification, they're going to be looking for things like Prime. Now, if everybody's Prime, then nobody's Prime. You know, right? If everybody's special, nobody's special, right? The same kind of thing that goes along with um, if everybody uses a coupon code to get that green bar, then nobody stands out right? Go the opposite. If everybody's using, if most of your competitors on page one are using a coupon code and it shows that little green box next to their title, try it without that coupon code. Don't just blend in and do what everybody else does because even the gap, the absence of something can also stand out to the eye, okay? To stop the scroll. Um, I can come back to this. I'm guessing this, is, this, this piece right here, this whole apex stitch thing, right? usually begs uh, additional questions afterwards. I will kind of wrap on this slide by saying that in this example, even if it means that we do double stitching in order to reinforce, in order to fluff up the top of the, you know, like whatever it is, right? As it turns out, every single executive chair on the market has the same kind of double stitching. But it, if you're the only one who points it out to the consumer, your product has a higher perceived value to that consumer and they're willing to pay extra for it, okay? Hopefully that makes sense, right? Uh, negatives, that's a great question, Victor. So as far as negatives go, things it doesn't have, like contains no uranium, right? Um, I, I, there's, there's kind of a reverse psychology in that. Usually uh, that can work for you or that can work against you. It depends on how unique you want to make it, right? If your product has no... Um, now, you also got to make sure that the words you're using don't get flagged by some auto, uh, automated bot at Amazon <laughs> because, you know, uh, you know, certain words are going to be prohibitive or going to be caught, right? You know, um, but I, that is kind of a, a, a can, that is kind of a, 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 the negative. Yeah, you could, but then the, the problem is that how do you then answer that? Because you bring them in and say, like, hey, we, we manufacture um, our garden rakes with no uranium. It's kind of like, well, who the heck would actually manufacture a garden rake with uranium? It's kind of like people feel like it's clickbait, 
right? We don't want to do the clickbait where they get kind of duped into, you're not duping a shopper, right? You're trying to express that we have an extra value, right? Um, now, in some cases, you're going to have supplements that say, you know, like, you know, sugar-free or, you know, whatever the case is, right? But chances are, if that is normal for your, for your product niche, then everybody else has something like, you know, sugarless or sugar-free. It doesn't stand out anymore, right? Again, you're looking for something that makes you stand out from the crowd to differentiate. So you take the road less traveled, if you will, okay? All right, so um, this one here, so this was kind of the office chair one, right? I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you 30 seconds here to put into the chat. So get your chat, uh, chat windows open. What you're looking for in this slide is what caught your eye first? Okay, what stood out? Scan across these. Which of these images caught your eye and why first? Okay, the white one, yeah. White went among all these, the sea of black colors, yeah. Okay, what else? Amazon Choice Badge, yes, very good. Best Seller Badge, excellent, yeah. The coupon, right, because very few are using coupon. Excellent, I love the guys, I love the fact that you're on top of this. Yep, white and black one with coupon, all right. Thank you, so I, you know what, I really appreciate you guys are jumping in and really participating on this. this. That tells me that you wanna learn this stuff and, uh, and I'm getting through, so that is fantastic. The blue chair, yes, absolutely. It's a contrast in color, right? Now, in some cases, you would also see things like, oh, this one's non-compliant because it has a background image. It's not just on its own. But the problem is that you also have a few others that may be standing out here um, that have the, either the same image or have some kind of background. Now, let's see here. Insert number four across the top. Um, Yes, yeah. So that is something that you start seeing on some of the just below the images. You'll either see like some a, a color wheel, um, or you'll see like a text version of that saying, "Oh, there's other variations that are available." Right. Hopefully, that's kind of what you're talking about. Now, in the middle there, you're also talking about you know Amazon, of course, points out things like, "Oh, here's highly rated and well priced products under sixty dollars in this price range, in this price range." Those, of course, grab the attention. That's why Amazon put them in there right? Um, you'll also see this if you go to your subcategory page. It used to be like, here's the best sellers. If you go out there now, what you'll see is like, oh, here's the, the, the Amazon choice ones. Here's the ones that'll ship quickly. Here's the ones that are uh, rated the highest. Here's the ones that are the best sellers. Here's the ones that are most gifted. There's all kinds of junk in there now, right? Because Amazon is trying to mix it up um, and really try to segment the eyeballs to get shoppers to slow down because if they slow down a little bit, they're more likely going to buy more things. Makes sense, right? Uh, the, the Kerbal chair. What is the Kerbal chair? I'm not familiar with that term. See now Veronica, she, she already came up with something. It's like, uh, is there one that says Kerbal? Yeah, I'm not actually sure. I I'm honestly don't know what that word means. So I appreciate if you, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> you know what? Some of you may remember uh, some of the old American commercials regarding gum, and they would talk about, um, uh, you know, gum or or uh, toothpaste or you know, gum. I guess it was, and it had like, oh, this has this this this, this secret ingredient that helps shine your teeth, and they called it retsin. Or I guess it was a breath freshener, right? And it's like now with Retson and people are like, wait, what the heck is Retson? It's the same kind of concept is you're trying to people go, it's like, wait, that has something special. I don't want to know what that means. I don't recognize the word. So actually kind of what you did, Veronica, is the Kerbal chair. While I didn't understand what that word was, you made, you know, and though it's like, oh, that's just standard English. Um, if that was in the title, I'd be like going like, what's a Kerbal? <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so that actually was kind of clever. I don't know if you meant to do that, Veronica, but uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, so in a C. Now, this one is actually not too bad. But one of the things you look at is think about what caught your eye on these. Not one of you mentioned something in the title. Right. 
Now, obviously, I've, I'm showing a lot here, but the title wasn't what came, what caught your eye, right? It was the image, it was the tags, it was some other weird feature that stood out sort of like a sore thumb. It was where, it, what's, you know, you know, that game, that childhood game, it's like, what's wrong with this picture? That's kind of what you're doing. It gets people to stop, grabs their attention, right? Yeah, okay, you really can't see the title. Well, intentionally, that's actually how we put the, sl the slide together is so that you were actually looking at what are the visuals because you finger, think, think about this, is that when a shopper is just scrolling through kind of mindlessly going through and just looking at a bunch of different things, they're not actually reading the titles, you know, not unless something says like, it has no uranium, then, then they're like, wait, what? <laughs> that was a great idea, by the way. <laughs> um, all right, let's move forward here, okay? The main image mirrors competitors, right? So as you've just proven, there were certain listings that caught your attention first. A lot of it had to do with the fact that it either had a weird shape, it had a different color, it had some kind of a code to it um, that stood out. But ultimately, we're talking about the Clone Wars, right? When everything looks the same, how do you do the opposite of what competition is so that you stop the scroll, so you grab the shopper's attention? In uh, and, and I want to say uh, thank you to Alex for coming up with the, the phrase as far as Clone Wars. I think that's awesome because you think about it, if any of you are Star Wars fans, uh, you know, they see that like they show like this whole sea of clone, you know, droids that are out there and they all look ex exactly the same. And there's just a massive sea and there's no way you could pick out where's Waldo in the middle of that uh, crowd, right? Uh, the same thing is happening now because there's so much competition and so much copycatting that is going on on Amazon and your product niche may be better or worse on this, but similar to the title, the objective is to stand out with your main image. Now you've got to still do it within the terms of service, right? It's got to be compliant still, but look at what everyone else is doing and do the opposite. So consider something like this, which of these images, uh, which images stand out to you of these shoes? Which one kind of gra grabs your attention first? Now I'm going to go ahead and talk while you're do doing that. The ones that typically do, the first one that caught my eye, of course, was this, uh, this shoe that was pointed the opposite or basically pointed at a different angle than what most of the other ones were, right? It's this one that is, uh, has basically two shoes, shows the top and the bottom. It stands out because it's just different. It's not because it's a different product, because they did something different with the image, right? The second one that caught my eye were the ones with the white stripes, that contrast that, that stands out, right? Okay, so third line, one from, yes, okay. Four over three down, yes, yep, exactly, yep. Two shoes, yeah, exactly, yep. Shot of the bottom, exactly, yep, because it's like, oh, here's something that's cool about this. That is an example of in the image, that brand actually stated, here's what's unique or cool about this product because they turned in the background, it's subtle, it's not in your face, not trying to stuff it onto the image, it's off in the background, but you're like going, hang on, that's got a, a you know a, a, like a like a day glow orange um, you know sole on the bottom of the shoe. That's kind of cool, you know. Subtle, but they did an excellent job of showing some kind of differentiation in the image, which is hard to do, right? Because I was saying one or two words in order to, to show the benefit or the differentiation, and they did it actually in the image, uh, even though there's a lot more restrictions on the image. But the other thing they did, of course, they changed the angle from what everybody else did. Now, those of you who have been around uh, the, the Amazon selling community for a long period of time, remember that uh, I think it was Amazing Selling Machine always said, it's like, oh, well, you want to have, you know, one of their, their stage authors said, you want to have your image so the shoelaces are pointing to the buy box, you know, the add to cart button, because psychologically, if you're pointing towards the, the add to cart uh, button, then that's going to compel them to, to click on it. You know how many years ago that that was introduced to this community? And, and how you see like so many people either do the same thing or they all kind of typically, they start mirroring each other. They kind of clone each other because they go, well, they're successful, so I'm going to do what they did. And now everybody blends in, 
right? Or you were you were a leader in this space and now everybody's caught up and copied what you did because you showed some success. And now you're struggling to keep market share, which is something we constantly attack within my agency, Canopy Management, <laughs> like that plug. Um, <laughs> um, that is something that we, we, we attack as far as gaining back market share and growing from there. But the product positioning in the images, the lifestyle imagery that sometimes happens, you know, we saw that more in the chair where it's like, oh, this chair is sitting in a cool office. Well, I like the office. You'd be surprised at how many people, this is kind of a side note here. You'd be surprised at how many people see a lifestyle image in a product detail page and will actually say like, wow, I really like that lamp that's in the back of the office where this office chair is being shown. I'm going to go find that lamp. And they end up buying the lamp also, or something that looks a lot like it. Uh, that's a whole nother strategy. That's a whole different tactic as far as, uh, you know, having some of those subtle things where you can advertise against products that have things in that lifestyle image, you know, in the background, maybe your product or a product like yours, and you can run ads against that whole different strategy. I'll tell you about that because that's the advertising, right? And which is, this is not. Um, live models, you know, it's very common. You know, you've probably heard before is like, images that have people's faces, for instance, or bodies, humans stand out to humans, right? It's just kind of a natural attraction of the species. Um, and so oftentimes that that stands out. Now, at the same time, we can also be turned off or creeped out if the, if, if the model they're using has something weird, you know, the weird camera angle, or they've got uh, weird contact lenses or, you know, anything like that can also throw off uh, a shopper and do the opposite direction. But ultimately, the point of this is you're simply just trying to differentiate your main image and your title enough so that you get the shopper to stop their eyeball scroll and catch attention for a split second of that shopper among a sea of same looking uh, products. Now, a warning. Hold on here, let me take a sip of what was here before. A warning, in six months, if you've had success with that change in six months, everybody else would have copied what you're doing. And so in six months, you've got to innovate again, right? So don't just do this once and walk away from it for the next year you know, change it up and look to see, do I need to differentiate every three months, every six months, right? Because you'll start getting copycats that come in and say, oh, I like how, what you did there. I'm going to copy it. Now, time to innovate again, right? We see that a lot. I, I like the one. He's like, yeah, what, what turns people off on the image is like, like when, when a, a female model has man hands. <laughs> um, uh, this is a great opportunity to do some split testing. Now, Amazon's split testing hasn't rolled out yet, right? You've got A plus split testing, which is still beta. Um, you have third party off Amazon split testing, which sucks. Um, it, but Amazon does plan on introducing split testing to um, uh, split testing to product pages and images and that kind of thing. Um, we, we will see that probably in the next year. So um, if you're not aware of that, that's going to be a great opportunity. I will have a separate training just on that. All right, we got to move. We got to keep moving here, right? If we're going to make it, make it within the hour here. So, uh, mistake number four, of course, is low contrast main image, right? Okay. So with this next one, let's do a little test. Okay. Uh, I'm going to show you a search result page, and I want you to respond in uh, in the chat, right? I'm going to show this to you quickly. All right. I'm going to show it to you for five seconds, right? This is a test of the five second rule. I want you to see what the impact on this, because this is you. I want participation from all of you on the call, right? I want this thing just flooded, right? So get ready, get the chat bot, uh, the chat, sorry, chat bot. I'm actually doing a chat bot uh, uh, workshop next week, but <laughs> a chat uh, session open, right? You're going to put in a number between one and eight. Okay. So these images are going to have a red number in the top left corner of each one of them. And what I want you to do is put into the number or into the chat, what is the first number that caught your attention? Okay. It's going to go for five seconds. You're going to have five seconds to put in a single number. Ready, set, go. Stop. 
Okay, 876. Okay, so three and seven definitely seems, I love the fact that you've all participated. That is awesome. Thank you. Appreciate that. So seven and three came out the most. Some of you others, uh, some of others picked out, you know, six and nine and one and, you know, some of these others, right? But let's take a look at it now. Okay, so three. What do you think it is about three that grabbed your attention? Since that one came up, then we'll also look at seven. Right, female, the face, okay? Here's a couple of things to think about. Contrast, she has the white shirt, but she also has dark hair on top and tan pants on the bottom, right? There's a higher contrast against the background white image, right? Smiling face, right? So it, we are human, right? We are attracted, especially in the COVID years, we are, we're glad, we're excited to see actual people's faces. <laughs> so um, yeah, so number three. Now, how about number seven? Why did number seven stand out to you? It's white on white, <laughs> right? It's just, it, there's nothing to it. It's, it looks like what you would see in a store. It's all folded up and it probably still has the plastic inserts on it. Um, it is square. It has a, you know, there's, it, it essentially is the opposite of what these others are. There's no contrast whatsoever. It just blends in. Now we could probably say the same thing about one and four, but many of you said seven. Now I'm going to beg one other thing on this now, or big, this kind of begs the question of, was it the image or was it the number seven that grabbed your attention? Interesting enough, psych psychologically, numbers like one and seven, some of these things that have kind of sharp, simple lines to them, catch our attention. <laughs> seven because it's a lucky number, favorite number, yeah. <laughs> seven because you first said the number, okay. All right, so I appreciate your feedback on that. This was a test. I want you to do this, not on the call, after the call, I want you to do this, and I here's what I do. When I'm coaching, I will say, go and have somebody who's not familiar with your brand, not with familiar with the product, forest for the trees kind of situation, right? Show somebody. Now, here's, if you want to go, here's kind of, I'll tell you two ways of doing this, right? Have friends or family who don't really know or care what you sell, right? And have them look at a screen like yours where your product is in the middle somewhere or your product is on, is on the search results, ask somebody, show it to them for five seconds and then take it away and say, which one stood out? This is going to be a big ed educational piece for you to say like, okay, I'm going to make some, some, some tweaks. And then I'm going to ask, you know, three more people or five more people, like what stood out first, right? So that at some point, my image is the one that ca consistently catches the attention of the shopper or of the per people I'm asking, right? You want to step this up? Use something like an MTurk or a micro worker site where you can get, you know, 20 people or 500 people to do the same thing where you set something up, maybe a, a page and it shows basically a static search result and it only shows for, for five seconds. You could do a 10 second test if you want, but it shows for five seconds and ask them which one stands out. That's kind of more of a, that's when you scale it up, right? If you really want to do something like that, that's actually something I'm working on. Um, but yeah, yeah, I would agree on that, Victor. So, so red does stand out, right? Things like that. That's also the same reason that red cars are more likely to be pulled over by police. <laughs> so yeah, that's a very good observation. Uh, all right, let's keep moving forward here. Okay. High contrast, high quality imagery, right? Contrast, of course, is that balance of light and dark. What we saw on that last one is we saw um, either where it was the absence of contrast, right? Very low contrast, where it just kind of blended in, it stood out from the rest. And also on the opposite side of that, we're looking for the outliers here, right? The extremes. And that was a, you've got white in the middle and you've got dark on top and bottom or on the outskirts, right? And so anything that, that provides a higher contrast, okay? Now, um, lighting, uh, natural versus artificial, okay? So natural, uh, creates softer 
shadows and typically is more flattering when it comes to human subjects, right? If you've got fluorescent lighting on a, a model, for instance, it's going to look more harsh. It's going to look unnatural. It's going to be create unease in the person viewing that. It's that whole thing of what we were saying before is, it's like, oh yeah, she's the, you know, the female model has man hands, you know, for instance, it's like, it's like, that doesn't look right. But when you have good lighting on the products, then is certainly more flattering. You know, certainly, you know, if you're, if you do your own photography, go out to YouTube and learn the three point lighting uh, technique, right? Or even a two point lighting technique. Um, artificial uh, lighting typically highlights the small details, but you may not want those small details highlighted. So you kind of have to pick and choose as far as like, do you want to highlight the small details of your product or do you want to hi highlight kind of like the overall feeling, you know, the good feeling of your product that it might deliver. That is especially important when it comes to things like your, your lifestyle images. If you have any lifestyle images where your product is Photoshopped onto a, a stock photo, do something about it that that stands out so easily unless you're talking about somebody who's just you know world-class photo editor uh that stands out like a sore thumb and it creates unease in the person viewing it and it creates distrust you don't want a shopper to have any kind of doubt or confusion on your product listing so definitely keep that in mind right what I was talking about as far as adding a fill light or a bounce card, right? That's kind of like the two point or the three point lighting. You can easily search on YouTube and see many, many examples of where people use different lighting. I even have that right now. Like the lighting that I have on right now, for instance, I can adjust that a little bit and create a little bit more of a dramatic, you know, it's a little bit bright on this side. In fact, it's a little bit too bright actually that I'm seeing it through this camera. It looks great on DSLR, not so much on the webcam, but you can see it's more dramatic lighting that's coming in from one side and I can use, I can either have that and if that's the effect that I'm looking for or I can fill it in a little bit more by adjusting the light so I've got more fill. You don't want to have straight on light. You want people tend to get depth out of uh, lighting from the side and it creates uh, more depth in the photo, better quality. Again, I'm not going to go into that. That's a that's a YouTube, you know, lesson for you, okay? If you're doing your own lighting. Uh, let's see here. Victor, yeah, you like that, the, the, the five second rule, uh, but you got to do it with somebody who's not familiar with your product, right? Um, tell them what you're going to do and say, I want you to pick out, you know, a product, you know, do the same kind of thing we did back, uh, you know, earlier here where, you know, if you want to create something like this, maybe you don't use red numbers, maybe you use black numbers, you know, who knows, um, but pick out the number um, you know, just kind of number them. Don't give them, you know, 30, give them what the, a, a shopper would normally see, which might be like, you know, like this example here, give them eight because five seconds, you know, is, is, is fast. It goes by real fast. Now, eye catching badges, right? Kind of like what you were, you were pointing out earlier, uh, eye catching badges by things like the Amazon choice badge, the bestseller badge, editorial recommendations, coupons. Again, this is not about should you add them in? You should do whatever is the opposite of what most of your competitors are, okay? If everybody else has a coupon code, go the opposite, right? Coupon code is not about the discount that you provide. It's whether or not it catches the eye. If it doesn't do the job of catching the eye because it stands out, if nobody else or very few are using the coupon code, use a coupon code because it's a scroll stopper. It catches the eye. Same thing with Amazon Choice and Best Seller, but obviously those are a little bit, require a little bit more effort to acquire, right? I will tell you is that the conversion rate on a Best Seller is much higher than an Amazon Choice badge. Why do you think that is? Put that in the chat. Why is bestseller badge have a higher conversion rate on average than an Amazon choice badge? Social proof, trust, may use actual sales metrics, right? More credible. Here's a question. What does the Amazon Choice badge represent? What does that mean? Time's up. <laughs> exactly. We don't know. Neither does the shopper. 
we actually probably know as sellers we're always like okay i know i want to get the amazon choice badge because it gives me a badge and it's primarily based off of selection from things like uh the you know the alexa app um as far as when i try to order something it's going to make a recommendation we understand the results of it and we understand that amazon will assign an amazon choice badge based off of, on individual keywords which we still want because again it's a badge of some kind but it definitely does not have the conversion rate because like you said it doesn't have the social proof and the trust that obvious words like the best seller well it must be a best seller for a reason right oftentimes it's because it's cheap you know, just you know, as far as the price, right? All right, so um, let's move forward here, okay? Now, I was gonna do, basically, you know, put this up here as far as test what catches your eye, right? Um, again, this is kind of like what elements catch your eye on here. Obviously, I'm kind of giving it to you by putting the boxes in here. Same kind of things that you were noticing before. Weird things that stand out that make people go, wait, what is that? You know, things like the, uh, what is it? The Serta chair, of course, it's got that weird yellow loop behind it. it, just catches the eye. Badges catch the eye, of course, right? Things like that chair on top is pointing the opposite direction than most of the other chairs. It catches the eye. You can see is that some of these things, simply just looking at your search result page and you're like, going, you know what, all I need to do is flip the image and my, my product will stand out from everybody else's because everybody else is pointed towards the add to cart button that was taught five years ago. If I just switch it up, it's going to catch the eye. Your job is not to do what everybody else is doing. Your job is to catch the attention of the seller or of the shopper, <laughs> the shopper first so they'll consider clicking onto your listing or your ad so that then you can close them on the value that you are offering. Well, first of all, I guess you're getting their attention, their eyeball, right? Second, you're going back to the beginning here as far as you've got to make sure that something in your title in the first 80 characters gets their curiosity going about what is something that's unique about your product. Third is you're delivering on that curiosity by answering that right in the top half of the page of your product detail page. As far as what it is special, you, you've got more room to go into more depth there. And then fourth, not making any mistakes on your product detail page that's gonna create, that's going to introduce confusion or doubt, right? That sounds like a lot of work, but if you put a little bit of effort into these elements, you're gonna stand out, especially this, this highly competitive month, next month, you're gonna stand out from your competition, right? All right, let's move forward here. All right, we are just over the hour here. So I want to try to wrap this up very soon so we can get to your questions. And we're not here all day. Fair enough. Okay. Um, bringing everything we talked about today all together, I want to show you just how effective these simple steps can be. This actually, this case study is actually an example from my own, from Canopy Management, right? So one of the services that we do is we do listing optimization. That includes some premium photography or premium 3D rendering. In this case, we actually use 3D rendering because there's subtlety of fabrics and detail that you can't get with just standard uh, photographic lighting. Even with the best lighting studio, that is difficult to do. But 3D rendering is, takes longer, it's more expensive for really quality work, right? But one of the things that we did on this, of course, is we had we basically turned it around so that we improved the images so that they stood out. It was obvious that there was a higher quality in the image to the shopper because in that main image. Now, things like the, the uh, those little symbols like anxiety, autism, ADHD, those are now uh, against terms of service. We kind of got away with it at the time, um, but I think we've pulled it since then because Amazon has gotten more strict as far as what is on that main image. But the point is, if you're scanning down, if a shopper is scanning down a list of, in this case, weighted blankets, and they see really bad lit, you know, top of fold, smash down, you know, product, it's gonna look like junk. It's gonna look low quality. When in fact, with the right, lighting with a little bit better photography. I'm not suggesting that you have to go in and make a huge investment, right? If you want to do that, then, you know, definitely talk to our team because we're going to produce phenomenal results. We really do. But my point is take a little extra time to redo some of the, the, the photos, really make it stand out. If, if you look down in the same thing, if you look down in your results 
you first thing you're trying to do is does my product stand out? Well, if it stands out because it looks like looks cheap, that's that's probably a warning sign. That's not a good way to grab the attention. That's a bad way. Uh, you ultimately want your product main image to look quality because once you grab their attention, they're going to take a second glance at your image and go like, ooh, that looks good. Okay, maybe read a couple of things in the title and then click through to find out more, All right? So anyway, uh, Victory said, uh, what's your opinion on using non-square photos, like taller than wider? Typically, I try to maximize. Again, this is kind of where you go back and you look, what is your competition doing? There's no right and wrong way of doing this. Don't do like everybody else teaches or says. Do the opposite of what is specific to your product niche. If everybody is using photos that take up 99% or, you know, whatever, you know, like they've maximized the image and everybody's maximizing the image. What do you want to do? Yes, you do want to have high resolution images. Yes, that is true. But if everybody is, is got their, their products maximized to the, the, the most that they can do on the image on, on, and all your competitors are doing that, what do you want to do? You want to go shrink. You want to do odd size. You want to make it so that there's this hike. There's there's more white space in your product image so that it catches the eye. Now there's a subtle balance there that you probably want to split test to make sure that it is both compliant and also actually doing the job of catching your eye. Usually you can see this through your advertising in the in the click through rates. You can usually see a bump up in sessions because people are visiting your product. So there's a couple of metrics that you can use in order to measure whether or not the changes that you made actually engaged more shoppers or not, right? But uh, if everybody else is, is doing, like one of the common things that I see on this is um, products that have multiple items. They're like a kit, okay? So it's got 20, think of like I say a, um, a survival kit, right? And they say, oh, we've got 50 things in this kit and they try to put it all onto the main image. And everybody does the same thing, tries to put it all onto the main image and everybody looks the same. Now, what happens if you come in and say, um, you know, do, do basically you're putting it going the opposite and you do something different as far as with that main image, right? So ultimately the, the, the real message here on this, don't follow the crowd, everything you do in the image, in the title, um, don't compete on, you know, don't, you don't need to compete on price and reviews stand out in other ways based off of your specific product niche. Take your top two or three converting search terms, look at the results and see how does your product stand out from the crowd? How does it even get their attention, get their interest in even coming to your listing in the first place, right? So don't follow the crowd is the ultimate message on this. Now, I do want to thank my team uh, for supporting me on this. Um, uh, Alex, I'm going to ask you to put the link back in here for Canopy Management. Again, for those of you who are interested? I'm gonna I'm gonna address questions here, so stick around. But my last pitch on this here, for those of you who are interested in working with a team of talented, passionate people who love helping sellers be successful, if you are a growing brand and you want to level up to the next stage in your brand in your business, then chances are you're gonna to want to work with a professional agency like my own, right? So Canopy Management, I designed it so that it brings out the full potential of your brand, right? So one of the things that we'll do on this is we'll work together to find out how we can best help you and identify your opportunities for short-term and profitable and long-term growth. Now, if we can't help you, we will tell you that too. We'll give you some advice and say, okay, come back to us at a later time. But at the same time, we are willing to give you honest advice as far as where you're at right now, where you could be, and what are some changes that you need to make. Now, whether or not you hire us to make those changes for you, to implement uh, you know, a, a successful strategy that takes you to the next level, that's still up to your choice. But ultimately you've got to qualify. And two, it may make more sense right now in your business to simply just get some feedback on where you're at. Um, but if you are ready to, uh, if you're considering outsourcing, then find out what kind of questions we're gonna be asking you. And what we're gonna tell you is the strengths and weaknesses of your products and your brand, we'll tell you. <laughs> we do a full analysis that way, right? 
And that's kind of where we put in the offer here. Thank you for that, Alex. Um, is that is what it means in order to kind of have that um, that qualification interview is we actually do a whole bunch of work on your behalf. So take advantage of it. Um, yes. All right. So I'll go ahead and leave this one up here for for a few seconds for you to grab uh, grab the link. Actually, it's already in the chat there. So I'll go ahead and leave it right there. Um, I'm going to stop the share and just talk to you just straight up head to head here. And I'm going to field a few of your questions and then we will wrap it up for the day. I appreciate your participation today. It was, it was fun. All right. Let's see what questions we've got going on here. If you asked a previous question and didn't get answered, if you don't mind, go ahead and put it back into the chat now. And that way I can go ahead and get that addressed. All right. Only seen a couple of questions come in. All right, let me go ahead and address the first one then. So thank you, Victor. Um, what is your feeling about including packaging behind the product in the main image? Um, generally, I mean, it's, it's fair. It's within, it's within compliance. In other words, you can, it's within terms of service. You can certainly do it. But again, do it because your competitors are not doing it. Again, it's that differentiation, right? It's not a matter of whether you should, it's about what is your situation. Look at your competitors, do the opposite, right? If they're not doing it, do it. Um, that's a great opportunity, actually, if you've got kind of a bland product by itself, you might have a high contrast box or packaging that you can then put in the background that draws the eye. So think of it that way also. Um, yeah, definitely make sure that it's nice looking, right? Don't have, a, you know, plastic crinkled bag. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's against, I don't think it's against terms of, terms of service, honestly, because it is part of the product that you actually do receive. It's not like it's part of a lifestyle thing or, or you're, you've got some kind of graphics or something like that in there. You can certainly have the, um, the product packaging in the background. Uh, Tommy, you were asking as far as the general fee structure of canopy management. So I, I can't go into specifics because every situation is different. We do have a, a mix of uh, startup flat fee and percentage of revenue because obviously we want uh, to be motivated uh, even more to help you grow. Uh, our focus course is going to be growing your profitability and your sales and your market share. And so we we definitely feel that this is a partnership. This is not just a client relationship. We, we see it as a partnership and therefore we want to we help you as much as we can. Now, we do have different programs for different size sellers. We didn't used to. We always used to just say like, you know what, if you're at $30,000 a month or higher, then come talk to us. Otherwise, go away, right? <laughs> right? We actually do have more things that we can actually help you on now if you didn't previously qualify um, or if you're below the 30,000, of course, um, you know, per month, we definitely have other programs that are going to definitely help you level up um, or help you, you know, take some of the weight off of you so you can focus on other things. So don't be afraid to reach out because again, we're going to have something that probably is, um, you know, you know, if this is your first month and you're selling, um, uh, COVID face masks, um, and you've had five sales, probably a little too early, <laughs> but, uh, I would say that certainly, you know, if you've been selling for at least a few months, um, then we probably have something where we can actually uh, help you level up. And if not, we can certainly say, here's what we recommend that you go and do in order to improve your situation so that we get to work together again in the future. Okay. Um, all right. Are you regularly checking the terms of service changes to make sure that uh, the advice you are giving is terms of service compliant? No, I make it up as I go, Peter. <laughs> Just kidding. Yes, actually we do because we've got a team. Uh, we actually have uh, on, on Canopy Management, we have a team of 52, 54, something like that. So we have different departments, including things like audit and compliance. Uh, we have, you know, creative services. Of course, we have our ad management teams also. Uh, but at all times, because we are working with multi-million dollar sellers with thousands of SKUs, we have to be on top of every single change that Amazon announces. Most of the time, 
our contacts within Amazon, because we meet with Amazon on a weekly basis. We have different reps in different departments. Um, and so we get that information usually three to six months before the change actually rolls out. So we usually get advanced knowledge so that we can uh, advise our, uh, our clients, our partners on what needs to actually change. Um, but yes, absolutely. <laughs> so that definitely goes into my advice. I know I was being cheeky there, Peter, but it is true is that we actually do stay ahead of that. We have to. We've got way too much resting on it. Um, do you have any consulting services related to new product selection? No, we actually don't. Uh, we offer a whole, we, we offer a bunch of different things. Um, we, we don't offer things that we could do, but we are, don't have a lot of history and uh, you know, we don't have a big success track record. So there, there's programs that we have, we provide services that we would consider to be beta that I don't offer. We don't offer during, uh, during our calls with uh, potential partners. Um, and uh, while we do help our existing partners with navigating what are new opportunities as far as products and doing product selection, that's not a standalone service that we provide. Um, you know, with our core being, of course, the advertising, the marketing side of the house, right? So great question. Um, showing the product packaging in the main image is against terms of third service, I think. Well, I know that's something that uh, I will have my team certainly re-review. Um, if it changed in the last week, then I, I, I may not have seen it that recently. Um, but I know that certainly it is done on a regular basis and I've seen recent uh, products launched that has packaging and other items in the background that are part of it. So um, I know it's certainly active. There's certainly, the, I don't see anybody policing it on that specific thing. Typically what Amazon is policing right now is uh, lifestyle images as the main image um, or like full models, for instance, is the main image. And then also, um, uh, things like graphics, for instance, in the main image, that's definitely being policed right now. So there, there's what might be within terms of service and what is actually getting hit uh, from a penalty standpoint. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll certainly take a look at that. Uh, but I certainly haven't seen any repercussions from packaging being in that image. So I'll, I'll go as far as that. All right. Let's do one last question here. Uh, pros and cons of using all caps in the bullet points. Um, I would say that that I like using bullet. I uh, use I like using all caps in the front of a of the bullet points of the features primarily just to highlight the benefit in one or two words. Don't go crazy and go five you know five six words that are they're all caps. Um, followed by a brief statement that somebody can scan really quickly. Don't go, don't create a paragraph. Um, just do a short sentence that kind of reinforces what you're saying by that benefit. So start with a benefit and then reinforce saying this feature provides this benefit, which, um, you know, this unique feature that I have provides that benefit to you. So you can use all caps, one or two words. So far, that's not against terms of service that I've seen either. Um, that probably will be someday. Um, the, the, the cons on that uh, would be overuse um, or not focusing on the benefits to the shopper, right? Where you simply are just saying, uh, this is premium quality. People don't care. That's, that's just too much of a generic word. I see that all the time. Um, having this is 352 millimeters by don't care what the size of it is or you know, the horsepower of, it, of the product is, or whatever the case is, tell me what's in it for me, right? Or their slide, right? What's in it for me? You do that in your, your bullet points also. Uh, let's see here. Do you believe that Amazon scores listings and that minor infractions such as prohibited words or emojis may degrade ranking by the A9 algorithm? Yes. They absolutely do. Yeah, everybody, every seller and every product does have a scoring system. I've seen screenshots of that system that Amazon has um, and it actually, it's historical too. So they'll keep it forever. So if you had some violation five years ago, it's it's on there, right? It's basically, it's you've got a, you've got a track record. Now, how that affects the, the A9 algorithm is 
one of the factors that gets slipped into the hundreds of things that go into the consideration of how a product is ranked organically in A9 is uh, is going to be things like seller performance um, and listing violations and you know listing scores, right? So it's kind of like the um, you know China's got their uh, you know the what do they call it? the social score or something like that or the the personal score? It's basically where they're judging people based on their behavior, um, and that g- it gives them access to things. Basically, Amazon's got the same kind of thing. Um, I would say that it has a very minor impact on the A nine. Uh, organic ranking algorithm. There's there's usually only two or three things. Typically, unit sales velocity and review velocity are probably two of the biggest ones um, that contribute to organic keyword ranking, followed by things like how diversified is your traffic, both from on and off Amazon sources, whether or not you're advertising, whether or not you're FBA, all these standard things that most of us are, are, are pretty familiar with. And then down on the fringe, you're going to get on thing like, okay, uh, if there's a tiebreaker between one or the other, then there's a whole list of things that uh, can affect that. And that would include things like past violation scores. Now, if you've got a severe violation and it was just last week, then yeah, it certainly, it certainly could. Um, that could be things as far as uh, a, re- a flag that's put into your account that might be related to some of your off Amazon promotion practices, you know, things like uh, rebate giveaways or, um, you know, requesting reviews or some of these things will, will generally, uh, you know, cause penalties um, to product listings. That's one of the things where we, we're seeing like um, the, the keyword rank 32 penalty, you know, which is basically where your, your product is going along and you're ranked pretty well. And then all of a sudden your top 10 keywords are all of a sudden exactly ranked at number 32. And that started, you know, uh, middle of September when they implemented that. Now we don't know exactly what are all the things that contribute. We do have some of the clues as far as what contributes to that situation, but that's an example of a real penalty that Amazon puts in place. For those of you who have been around for for many years and, and been on the uh, the Google space, you know you recall things like Google slaps and some of those, right? Uh, the penguin really, you know, the penguin slap and all these other things that are basically adjustments to the algorithm. Amazon's what most people think are algorithm changes on Amazon are usually a lot far more subtle than that. Things like re-indexing and that kind of stuff. That is an example of one that's no, that's an actual penalty that is a slap against people using practices they shouldn't be. Um, but yeah, we don't know all, all, every single detail on that one yet, but we're working on it. Um, but I would say that, uh, yeah, as far as the scores, Victor, um, it's going to have an influence and it certainly is going to have a, you know, level of severity, right. As you would expect. Um, but I would say it is more of a minor, uh, impact onto your ranking. There's much bigger factors as far as uh, shopper experience and shopper satisfaction that Amazon is going to consider first and foremost. All right. That's going to wrap it up. I want to thank everybody for joining me today. I hope that you're going to take action. Please message me back. You know, if you're over in the Amazon PPC troubleshooting group, for instance, message me back and say, hey, you know what? I put some of these things in in, in play and I got delisted. No, I'm kidding. Uh, and, and here's what it did for me. My sessions went up compared to before or my click-through rate went up. Uh, give me some feedback. Let me know that you actually took action. Uh I'm glad that you were at my very first one that was non PPC. Hopefully you got some good value out of it uh, and uh, go take action. Uh, Alex, thank you so much. Yeah, she put the link in there for the Amazon PPC troubleshooting Facebook group. Um, if you wanna drop back in the, the canopy link just for anybody who might've missed that one, uh, then I will close this out in 30 seconds. So I mean, nobody has any last minute session. Tommy, you're welcome, absolutely. Appreciate it. Hmm. Thank you. Awesome. Good, 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 good. Love it. All right. Go tell your friends. <laughs> Go tell your friends to look at your listings for five seconds. Do that test. Let me know that you did that one because I think that's some awesome feedback. All right. Thanks, everybody. Had a great time. I will talk to you soon. Take care.